thank you so much for joining us in the series of 100 Women of Impact. It's a really a pleasure to host you here. Thank you, Sarika. Thank you for inviting me. I'm looking forward to our conversation. Thank you so much, ma'am. Ma'am, you don't, Neela, ma'am, you don't need any introduction. Um, but one of the things which always stood with me was that you have spent more than four decades with the tech industry in the world. And you now hold very influential positions in some leading marquee companies as board directors, in uh, also as an executive counsel of NASCOM and many other government uh, related positions with IIIT Delhi. I, my first question to you is, how did you enter into the tech world when you didn't even have so-called engineering degree as your undergrad? So uh, Sarika, uh, four decades ago, um, when I did my master's, I did my MBA from FMS Delhi after I'd finished my, uh, uh, my economics graduation uh, from St. Stephen's. Uh, there were uh, very few IT companies. It was HCL and uh, Wipro and DCM data products. These were the few companies and DCM data products was a leader. Um, uh, in my management, I specialized in marketing. And this would be very relevant to many of the students who may be there in Plaksha University, um, that what we study, it, it may not be the thing we take up as we go forward in our career, but I was very keen to do a career in marketing. And um, most of the offers I got were from banks. And the only company which was willing to take a woman in the 80s in sales and marketing was HCL. So I landed up being in HCL because I, I didn't get any other offer. Uh, everybody was looking at me for, as a banker just because I did one paper in finance, which I didn't want to do. And um, hence I, I opted for HCL. And I always thought I'm making a career in marketing and not in tech. But what happens is technology it was such a, a fast changing field in those years. And it continues to be such a fast changing field that you just get excited about the new developments, the new tech. And uh, it, it became a career from saying, I'll be a marketing person who can go from one industry to the other. Uh, but it became, I should be a person who understands technology and hence uh, be a part of the tech world. Uh, my next question is this. Uh, and you have kind of answered it is that um, being in, not being an engineer was not a hindrance for you when you joined. But did you ever doubt, did you ever have any self doubts uh, when you took up some of these roles, which was highly male dominated in those days because these were typically uh, largely dominated by the engineering and the engineering industry is dominated by the men, uh, largely so. Did you ever have any self-doubts on the capabilities because A, you did not come from the background and B, you were the, maybe the only woman in the room most probably? So there are two questions. One is, did I ever regret not doing, uh, having a tech background? I did. Initially, whenever, and even till recent years, when you have meetings with clients and customers and government, um, and, and they know that you're not a techie and you always have a technology person with you, the respect a technology person gets purely because of their articulation and their deep knowledge on the subject, you wish you had a deeper knowledge on the subject uh, and uh, you could articulate it better. But what I find is, uh, and sometimes the role gets reversed. Sometimes you find that the tech, techies don't understand the domain. They don't understand banking and finance. They don't understand telecom. They don't understand manufacturing to the extent and the issues which are there to be solved uh, using various technologies. Uh, uh, you feel that you know more. So it's a give and take depending upon what the situation is. And I think that always helped me. But yes, when you walk into a room full of men, um, I think uh, first reaction is, why is it there are such, you know, such few women in this meeting room? Uh, but then, you know, I, I just focus on the subject which is uh, in discussion. This is, this is very interesting to actually say that we need to focus on the subject which is being discussed in the room. Uh, but 
you know, also sometimes it's also important to call it out. Do you think it's, I'm asking you this question, do you think that sometimes it's important to call it out that there are very few women in the room uh, and there should be more women in the room because you have worked on the diversity agenda of all the organizations you have worked with and have created many role models and um, have kind of changed the face of some of these organizations, how they were looking at other diversity. Has that helped or do you think it's important to call that out that we need more women in the room? No, I do that still in, in my role as board member. I keep pointing out diversity is critical. So I personally feel women have capabilities, same as men. But I think women are more imaginative. Women are more diverse in their thinking. And hence having the right uh, attitude, the right thinking in a room, in a company is extremely important. So diversity is good for business. It's not to be done just because we want to have equal men and women. If you look at universities and schools, you will see, depending on the courses which uh, you look at, diversity ratio could be as high as 30, 35% to 45%. Now, if you decide you're not going to hire women, you are missing out 45% of the uh, population of students in the university. But if you believe that they are equally capable, they've gone through the same course, they've got great ranking, they are the uh, ones you should be hiring to, respect the diversity of thought they bring in and equal uh, capabilities. So uh, I, I speak about it at every forum. I even encourage parents to give an environment where uh, uh, girls can be encouraged to study and take up what they are passionate about. Have you seen a change in the industry across um, in tech industry? You have also been working very closely with the BFSI as clients and you now you sit on the few boards. Have you ever seen changes in the industry of how women in leadership roles are viewed over the years, are, are treated over the years? See, uh, as, as a, a woman in leadership, I felt um, you have a, a contribution to make in how the industry looks at you, how the external world looks at you. It's ironical. And I, I say it, um, if there was a man leader, he could have a conversation with another person on how his family is doing, how's the game of golf, how if they were playing bridge, how is it doing? Uh, they would discuss that and it would not be taken as anything um, out of the ordinary. But if a woman had a conversation with a man and said, how's your golf game going before you started the meeting, you'll say she's trying to get very familiar. So there is a difference in how you carry yourself and how men uh, carry themselves. I'm sure if two women were, uh, two women leaders were to meet, we would definitely have a question on how you're doing in whatever uh, you, the uh, other activities you were taken, you had taken up as hobbies. So I see that difference. As a result, the conversation which we have is perhaps not um, um, more on the social side. We tend to have conversation on the subject which is on hand or the meeting or the issues which you have in hand. I think once you are in a leadership position, you have immense confidence on discussing many issues. And guess what? When you're meeting another leader, man or woman, you will know they have similar issues. For example, talent management, attrition, uh, how do you retain uh, good talent, is common issues across every company, every industry, every country, right? For example, how do you look at growth? How do you look at next five years and how the business performances will be? Again, no matter which industry you are in, if you were to talk about growth, uh, it would be common across all industries, countries, businesses. My next question in this is that you have you have worked in these large companies, but you have also interest in startups. You mentor many startups. You have invested in some startups. What do you think, um, and vice versa question, what do you think some of these large companies which have become very large behemoth and have had some successful growth strategies, but now can learn from some of the agi the agility of the startups? What do you think one of these large MNC firms could learn from some of the startups you have worked with? So the startup cultures are very different. First of all, they are smaller teams. And these are learning teams who are 
all learning how to do a new uh, concept, business in a new concept, new software, new technology. That is one. Two, startup teams are very passionate because they've come, uh, come together to work on a particular area and they, they are really passionate. And you see the long hours they are able to put in without cribbing about the time they spend in startups because they are passionate about what they are doing in that uh, particular organization. There is a belief that you're creating something new and I strongly believe in the startup ecosystem, we are creating something new. Either it's new products, new services, new e-commerce platforms, uh, new way of healthcare, et cetera, et cetera. We are creating something different and that leads to a lot of excitement which you don't see in traditional companies, right? In the growth parameter, as you're multiplying your revenue or how you're growing is phenomenally faster in startups because the base is small and they are in a hurry to bring their products and services into the market. Now you compare with a larger company, a, you see slower growth because these larger organizations have gone through, they're already at a mammoth size. And suddenly if you tell them to even grow by 5%, it is extremely difficult because it may be adding thousands of crores to their top line in one year, which may not be easy for them to do. Two, uh, you have many, a very large talent and perhaps they are not aligned to the same goal and you have multiple businesses. So it tends to become a review driven and governance driven process rather than a small team passion driven. I have another question for you is, what advice would you give to the younger women entering the IT industry? We have many young women students and many young corporate women who are planning to enter the tech industry or are part of the tech industry. What advice would you give to them now? So um, a few things. First, I say, follow your passion. If you're excited about technology industry, please be in that place. There's no point being in a job or in an industry which you're not passionate about because you're going to spend very long hours, very many years in that industry. So don't, don't just take up a job because it's a good job or something. It's because you want to be there. You are passionate about that area. And keep in mind 10 years, 15 years, you will spend in that space or even more. And you can't be just doing something which you're so bored of and you don't want to do. So that's one. Uh, the, the second thing is uh, women think, and I've noticed this over the years, that um, my work is noticed by my manager and everyone else, and I will get the right job opportunities and the right increments because my boss and some other seniors know what I do. I don't think that happens because keep in mind your manager and your bosses will have larger teams to manage. They don't know what you are passionate about, what you want to do next, what role do you want to do? And sometimes they may not even know how well you have done in your current role. So it is good to put up your hand and say, I want a different role and perhaps talk to HR or talk to the manager of the team where you think they're doing different work than you you want to do to always uh, ensure that your managers and the uh, leaders know what you are doing. Otherwise, you could be a silent performer and nobody will know and your career will be on a slower path than what uh, it actually uh, reasons to be. Um, thank you so much for sharing that because I used to think or many people have kind of told me many year times after my 10 year, 12 year stints that I always just get up and go and leave that industry to do something different. And I must be crazy to do that. But I always feel that wherever you find your passion and purpose, you should move yes. towards that and do it.